Greetings accordion lovers all across the universe. I was out gardening today so I'm a sweaty dirty mess and I'm not putting that accordion on. So today I'm going to take a day off and have a fun day and just do some theory here. If you want to learn how to do the um, chords with the five fingers that we talked about then watch the other videos. But I'm taking some time off here for fun stuff. So this little chart that I made, this little thing, might look confusing and all jumbled up, but actually it's kind of a beautiful thing, and I'll explain it. And the designations for tones that I use, such as G2, G3, B3, are the ones that the Acoustical Society of America uses. That's, that's the ones I'm using. That's a designation system. So I guess we can start now. On the accordion, on the left hand, you have, as you know, six rows. We've already talked about that. And I spoke about it in my other video, but I didn't speak accurately, and I didn't really go into detail because I didn't want to. I didn't have time. But above these six rows of buttons, on any really good accordion, especially a very high quality accordion, you'll see switches. And not only that, but the switches have symbols on them. These are register switches, and each one ordinarily have a symbol on it. Now, my cheap accordion, it doesn't have this. But a really nice accordion will have the symbols, and that will tell you, that will tell you which reed sets are grouped together and which are activated and available when you hit any given switch. All right? So those are the switches with the symbols. Now, this is a register switch symbol. It's not on my accordion, but but this is the uh, these are the reed sets that are used on one of my switches, one of the two switches. So you have these dots indicating which reed sets are being used. For example, here's the bass reed set, the tenor reed set, contralto reed set, and the alto reed set. Now the um, Acoustical Society designations would be these. The sopranos C5 to B5, alto C4 to B4, contralto F sharp, 3 to F4, tenor C3 to B3, and bass C2 to B2. You might be familiar with C4. That's or that's called middle C. That's the middle C on your accordion and on, on your uh, keyboard, like your Casio or Yamaha, whatever. And um, you, you might be familiar with that. So anyway, now I think we can get started. So when you hit buttons on the accordion, depending on the register switches you've selected, you're going to be activating reeds. So on this one switch, it's on my accordion, you can see that there's four reed sets in play. Now, here's the really beautiful thing. When you play a bass button, any bass or counter bass button, what happens is for example, let's say we're using the G, we're hitting the G button. When you press that G button, the G bass or the G counter bass, each G in each reed set will sound. It'll make a sound. So what we do is we look up here, we look at the G bass that we're playing. And when we press that button, we're employing the G2 reed in the bass reed set. We're, we're using the G3 reed in the tenor reed set, the G3 reed in the contralto reed set, and the, the G4 reed in the alto reed set. In other words, this top row are the reeds that are, that are employed when you press the G bass button or the G counter bass button. Now, when you press the G major button, you have six reeds in play. In other words, air is 
passing through six reeds. You have the G3 from the Contralto reed set, B3 from the Contralto reed set, D4 from the Contralto reed set, D4 from the Alto reed set, G4 from the Alto reed set, and B4 from the Alto reed set. So you know what reeds are in play for the, the bass, G bass button, and you know what reeds are in play for the G major chord button. I'm trying to speak correctly here. I always make boo-boos, and I'm just trying so hard to not say something stupid. So now, you know that. So what happens when you want to press the G bass button with the G major chord button to get that chord? That's G plus G major to get that G major chord. Well, let's go back and look at this. When you play the G bass button, you know from above, all right, that four reeds are employed, but you're only going to hear three tones. You're ordinarily going to hear only three tones. Why? Because you see up here on the, <coughs> excuse me, on the G bass selection here, that the G3 tone in the tenor reed set and the G3 tone in the contralto reed set are sounding at the same time. Now, unless you have super hearing like Superman, you're likely not going to be able to distinguish between the two. I can't tell, and I have excellent hearing. So what happens is the four reeds are being used for the G bass button. You're likely going to hear only three tones. Okay. Now on the G major button, those six reeds are in play. You're likely only going to hear five tones, unless you have that super hearing, which you probably don't, because... In the, the reeds used for the G major button, the D4 reed in the contralto reed set and the D4 reed in the alto reed set are being sounded simultaneously. So you probably can't distinguish between the two, right? Now, to play the G major chord, here we, we show by, in the diagram that eight reeds are being sounded and you can hear six tones. And why? <coughs> because when you play both buttons at the same time, you have what we call button shared duplicates. In other words, the G bass is accessing the G3 read in the contralto read set, and the G major buttons accessing that same read. So, so you're actually only accessing one read here, even though you're pressing two buttons. The same with the G4 in the alto read set. Both buttons are accessing that same read. So technically speaking, you're using only eight reads to play the G major chord, which is the G button and the G major button. Now, even though only eight reads are being employed, you're likely only going to hear six tones because remember the the intra group duplicates like the G3 here and and the bass from the bass button activated by the bass button and and the D4 the two of them activated by the major chord button you can't distinguish between the two i call it intra group duplicates because you can't tell that they're both playing at the same time so Essentially, when you play the G major chord, the G bass with the G major button, you're really only using eight reeds, and you're likely going to be able to hear only six tones because you don't have Superman hearing. Now, you can review this, or if you really want to dig in, you can stop the video and write it down or you can just print screen enlarge your YouTube video screen and print screen and print it out so what we have then is we have we started out with one two three four five six seven eight nine ten reads but they're only theoretical these ten reads are theoretical that's theory then we subtract the two button shared reads we subtract two reads because two buttons are accessing one read and one read only. So we subtract the two actual reads 
from the 10 theoretical reads and we get 8 actual reads. But now here we subtract 2 more reads because we can't distinguish between the D4 tones and, and the major button and we can't distinguish between the G3 tones in the base G bass button. So we're subtracting two actual reads from eight actual reads and we get six actual reads and that is we're, we're hearing six actual tones. We're actually hearing six tones. Unless of course like I said you have super super hearing which which I'm sure you don't. So the six tones that you're going to hear ordinarily would be G2, G3, B3, D4, G4, and B4. Now if you go up to the list of reads up here, you'll see this thin blue line separates the tones. And the reason being is because, once again, you're going to hear the G2 and you're going to hear the G3. Now you see there's three G3 reads in play. And since you can't tell them apart, we just consider this one sound. All right, we have one sound here, one sound here, one sound here, 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 and here. So we then we move to the uh, B3. Only one B3 read. That's easy to tell. I can easy hear it. I'm good at this. I can play any button on my accordion and tell what, what tone it is. And then you have here the D4. There's two D4 reads sounding, but in your mind it's just going to act like and sound like one tone. Then you have the G4s, which will sound like one tone, and then the B4. So you have these six here are mapped out up here and they're separated with the thin blue line so that you can see kind of what's going on in your brain. And that is the G major chord. If you want to do other chords, you want to make a little chart using like let's say graph paper, you can do any chord and figure it out by mapping them out tone by tone. For example, if you wanted to do a really fancy chord like the, uh, I showed you the C, C minor 9, you can do that. Or the C dominant 9, you can do any of those chords. You can map them out and figure it out. And most people don't really care. But since this is my day off, this is fun time. I wanted to show you this, and I, I hope it's useful, and uh, I hope you'll, you you get benefit from this, because nobody talks about this. I don't see anybody on the internet talking about it, because maybe nobody cares. So if you care, fine. If not, uh, on my next video, I'll try to go back to showing how to use a pinky and the thumb, and we'll get back to that, and, and back where we left off. So thanks for listening, and maybe we'll see you again. Later.